the older elders. Mm. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be sixty-five. No, sixty-four. Huh? No, I'll aren't you eighty? Mama's sixty-four, oh, Grandma. No, eighty. I'm eighty-three. Yeah. 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 I'll be eighty-four in a couple of months' time. Trying to be younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know Still a spring chicken. <laughs> <say. laughs> Trying to lie about your age. <laughs> when you know, I went to the hospital, eh? yeah. They said, "Edith, how old are you?" <laughs> and I didn't think, yeah. yeah. I said I'm 64. No, I'm 63. Oh, she looked at me. Yeah. She said, "Well, you were born in 1936." I know I was born in 1936. That's August of 1963. <laughs> she said, "No, you're 60. You're 83." Oh, okay. <laughs> You wouldn't even be pension age yet at sixty four, <laughs> Grandma. Just like, just like, uh, <laughs> like one time I was at the at the at the office. Uh, I was coming outside from the van office. Yeah. And I met Isabel, eh? and she said, "Auntie Pearl," she said, "How old are you now?" She said, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, I said I'm uh, Oh, I said I was 30, 38. <laughs> I said I'm 38. I was in the class. I to be 63. As <laughs> she turned around, she didn't say nothing. She just looked at me. <laughs> That's you lying about your yeah. age, trying to be young again. <laughs> yeah. So, what would you say to the young people? Like, June is national. Indigenous Month, that's what they call it. Yeah. And uh, June 21st is National Aboriginal Day. And yeah. I, and I know, like, you're one of the, the older yeah. elders last that we have left on key. And I guess that's why I, I'm yeah. doing this because we want to, like, what, if it, anything first comes to your mind or to your heart, what, what would you want to say to the Anishinaabe Bay people today, right now? What would you, your message or what would you, want to uh, tell them what the, what i'd like to see me happen uh like the other elders like to meet with the young the young people not only one elder but four or five elders meet with 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 the young kids from say from from uh i say from what well, age that they can understand I don't know what age, but any age, one understand. You know, uh, we had uh, we had uh, this guy come and teach was teaching how to make drums in keys here. You know, uh, I was surprised at the parents we were taking participating in anything that we try and teach young kids here. Mm -hmm. And the only one that was there, and I was there, I went there, I went there just to support them. I went there, and the only one that was there was Shannon Zula's boy. Mm -hmm. He made a drum, and you know, I was sitting there, and this guy from Cooties was there, real friendly guy, and uh, and uh, he made the drum, eh? yeah, he had the leather and everything, and a white drum, a nice white drum. Oh, he was proud of that drum. He was saying, Grandma, look at my drum. <laughs> Just praising him, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you got to learn to sing. I you come and see Coco. I'll learn you how to sing. <laughs> Bring your drum. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, Grandma, I'll come. He never <laughs> come yet, but if he came, I'd show him how to sing. Because yeah. I can teach. I, can, I have a few Indian songs. My own yeah. songs that I was given to her. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. My godfather, uh, uh, my godfather in India, Neo, Neo was uh, Dorothy Crew's dad, John Muska, that was his name. That was my 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 uh, godfather in India, Neo. That old man raised me when I was small. I used to go and stay with him in Kizigons. He's from Kizigons. <laughs> I knew that old man taught me lots. I used to go with him when he'd make uh, his uh, pipe, he used to smoke a, a corn pipe, and uh, he would go and look for 
uh, his tobacco. He wasn't smoking tobacco in a package, he was smoking uh, gray willow, silver willow or some kind of a tree. And I, I used to go when he'd come here and stay with us here, he'd have a tent there and he'd tell me in, in Soto, you know, I used to talk Soto when I was five and six years old. Four years old, I was talking Soto. My grandmother would talk Soto to me, I'd talk Soto to my grandmother, Mrs. Babycock, and I'd talk, taught, my, my Neo taught me how to talk, she talked Indian all the time. And I started, that's where I started to learn. I used to talk Indian when I was three or four years old. Yeah, and uh, we, he come here and camp here three or four days at my, at my dad's, where my dad and mom were living. They were just living across the lake where uh, I lives. That girl across the lake. Oh, Tony? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's where we lived. And we used to walk from there over the hill that way towards the creek. We call it the creek where Solomon lived. That's where we used to go. He cut those willows. And he'd tell me what, what the willow was named. And I can't remember the willow's name, where those willows are. But Freddie knew, yeah, my son-in-law, Fred Brass, knew. And we never did go up there. We were always going to go up there. We never got up there. Mm. And uh, and I used to, used to cut about three feet, three feet long, them, them willow sticks. And we'd come carry them, and he'd tie them on his back. I say, ma, oh, he said, the say, ma, oh, this is my tobacco, he said. And I knew, I always remember him that. That way, yeah. He was an old man, gray-headed old man. Very wise old man, yeah. He had a lot of, a lot of wisdom. That's what you call a, an elder that has a lot of wisdom. You know, a, a lot of elders have wisdom, but they respect themselves. You know, you might think, oh, this old elder don't want to tell me nothing and teach me anything, but they respect themselves. They don't want to get hurt if this person doesn't do right and doesn't listen. You gotta listen to an elder if you want a good life. You know my girls, I try to talk to my girls, they know better. But that's not the way it works. You hurt that elder inside here. Sometimes you might, you hurt an elder, but you're gonna pay for it. Because that one takes care of old people. Yeah. Because they got a lot of wisdom. He do not understand what wisdom means today. You know? It is proud to have a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about it when I'm here. You know, I pray lots, both ways, my language and English. Because he put us here on this earth to do what we can and to love one another, help one another, you know, help one another because it's only realist, realist, uh, how do you, how you say, realist, uh, realistic, I can't say it. But it, to me, it means like, don't be that way, you know, because when you help somebody, Especially, you know, we were learned, we were learned. My mother and my dad learned us, my grandparents, the old people, my grandmother and my two grandmothers and my two grandfathers. They said, if you see an elder smoking, they used to give us tobacco. This one old lady, her name is Matilda Pesque, that old, old lady. Yeah. She was a very great, great old grandmother to everybody, not only us, but to everybody. And she used to smoke a pipe. And when she'd come walk over, she used to walk around when she was old with a cane. She was in good health. Because she drank Indian tea and, you know, different things. And she was old. And uh, 
and she used to come and walk over to my mum's and my dad's. Just lived close there where that where that house is there, just across. I like to go there sometimes to where her little house was. You know, they probably look around you probably find antique antique ooh, antique stuff, eh? Yeah. I always think that. And and uh, she used to come to my mom's and she'd sit on the floor, eh? She never sat in the chair. She always sat on the floor, carry her little blanket and she'd put it there and she'd sit there. And she used to smoke a pipe. And uh, my mom used to have, always have tobacco. Old Charlie always had tobacco, eh? And he'd get, go and get his tobacco. Eh? And he'd take it from the right hand and put it in our left hand like this on the left hand and he give us he tell us oh me school go just like a thought why don't give your grandmother she was smoke so fill her pipe so there were three of us and she's had three little she you know the old ladies were for real traditional they really respected everything eh not like today and uh, so we put that there, not no cool like a song. Here cuckoo, have a smoke. And she put the, she put it in her little hand there, all three of us was put the back on her left hand. And she'd have a a little rag or something, and she'd put her tobacco in there with the rest of her tobacco. Uh, and she's so proud. Yeah, she was so proud, she was so thankful, you know, thanking my mom and dad for doing that, learning as, as a traditional way of teaching your children, that's one part, one part. And another part is, when you go to a feast, you see some women sitting like this, cross-legged, and the way you sit is like this, with your legs out, and your, on your uh, uh, tea towel on this side, on the right side. Because you receive everything on the right side and then you put it on the left side. And when when they come, you take your food from the feast, what all you get. Take it from the right hand, put it on your left hand, and you can put it on the side you know, till the till the bull comes around. When the the feast uh, when the bull comes around, that's where you put all your stuff. We're giving thanks to the Creator and we're feeding our dead people, our deceased people. And sometimes there's a certain kind of feast you have, you can't take anything home. And there's a feast, feast, one, one, one of those feasts, you, you take them home what you can't eat. And my old grandmother used to tell us when you get candies, you bring some home. You put them on a table in a little bowl or something. And the deceased are be thankful. Yeah. They might take some from there and they might not, but they are they'll be thankful no matter what you put. You know sometimes when I eat and I'm gonna eat soup, rabbit soup or whatever, duck soup. I put this, some in a little bowl, what I'm going to eat there, and I, I put it in a bush. I can't go to the bush, but I get something to take it, put it by a tree, yeah? Yeah. I used to, I used to help Shane lots like that. I used to try and teach Shane, that's only really one of my grandsons. I try to teach him. And. I used to hang his flag, uh, his flag, Wepanasun, they call that Wepanasun, your flag, you hang on a tree. And uh, his was green, his godfather, he was from, uh, he was from uh, Sakime, his grandfather. We used to go, I took him twice to go and visit his godfather in Sakime. Oh, that old man was good to shame. Shane's Indian name, that's his godfather. His godfather gave him an Indian name in a ceremony, at Campbell's ceremony. We were standing outside, uh, Shane used to always go 
Mushroom Camp was there when he had, when he was here for ceremonies. He used to always go to oh, Camel Soup. <coughs> He said, I'm so proud of my grandson coming to my ceremonies. He said, I told everybody. Shane was sitting there on the ground. And he said, I believe he has an Indian name, Campbell said. Traditional name. I can't remember. He said, Pearl, do you remember? I said, yeah. Captain Akwesit Gnu. Coming of the ego. That's Shane's Indian name. And his godfather told him all is to hang on four 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 seasons like the 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 spring the the summer the wind the fall and the winter four because there's always four things that that you do ceremony something if you if you had a godfather in india you'd have an indian in and uh, he uh, he uh, he used to do it when he was here with me. I used to make him do it. He go to the trees. I get tobacco. I get his. I get his uh, flag. They call him flag in Indian. But we been awesome. I'd get. I'd get him. I'd make him go to the bush and hang it up, and say a, say a prayer to the Creator. You don't have to talk. If you can't talk your language, shit, talk your English. He'll understand you. He'll hear you. Up. Yeah. Ask him to give you your language. He'll give you. Up. You pray for something, Shanafu. You'll get it. You should pray for. Your, ask the Creator to give you your language. <laughs>